sing. And we'd like you to sing with us. So rise up, rise up. Stretch those legs out and join us on Rise Up, Oh My Soul. It matters not. You're a spiritual being, having a spiritual experience in this human form. And we're so happy that you're here with us today. So we begin everything by lighting the flames of faith, and um, which is a call to service. We perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all people and all faiths, all sentient beings, come from the one great universal presence, which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. 
We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as Reverend Carla Sharadas lights the last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. Now, please join me in an affirmative prayer. <clears throat> this is what I know for certain. I know that there is only one power, one presence, one life. And whether we call that one spirit or divine mind, beloved presence, or the thing itself, or a pet name matters not, it is the power of creation. It is the first cause of every single thing, visible and invisible. And it is everywhere present. It is everywhere present in its entirety. This mighty moving power is in this very room. We acknowledge it, we see it, we feel it, we appreciate it. It is who we are, where we are, what we are, and it is for us. So what I know is that every single being here is here on purpose this morning and receives whatever it is that he or she wanted, whatever it is that the soul wanted by being here, they receive that through an idea, through the music, through the message, through the prayers, through the, the community. The common unity is all around us, in us, and through us. So what I declare for each one of us is that beginner's mind, that decision to be teachable, to be aware that something greater <coughs> than our intellect, even greater than our emotions, that power, that presence, is moving through each and every one of us as love, as prosperity, as goodness, as freedom, as truth. So what I know is that this time together is blessed. It's a blessing and that it unfolds in absolute perfection. I'm so grateful for knowing what I know. I'm grateful for this place and for the science of mind and the dependence that we have on it. And with my heart filled with gratitude, I simply place this word in the action of divine mind, of the law of God. It's done, it's complete, and please help me anchor it by saying with me, And, and so it is. is. And now I'm calling forward <laughs> Kathy Story, <laughs> who's going to do our, going to do our uh, Declaration of Principles and lead us in our affirmation. Wow, look at this ocean of devotion here. <laughs> uh, nice to see you guys. This is our Declaration of uh, Principles. Please join me. I believe in God, the one who created intelligence, operating through the universe, and operating throughout my entire being, now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates upon a law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect created intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now, and I rejoice in it, and so it is. And this is a great affirmation, very powerful. Say it with meaning, guys. You ready? 
All right. Today, I remind myself that life is a victory march. I say yes to the greatness that lies within me. With God as my partner, I have defeated fear, resentment, and judgment. My life is on purpose, and so it is. Thank you, Kathy. And please welcome Tina Walker. Yeah. 
always so good to have you here. And I know a lot of you are here because of our guest speaker, and I'm so grateful that you came today. And for those of you who are just coming because it's the thing you do on Sunday, I know you're in for a big treat. Yay. So um, with no further ado, I'm going to introduce our, our speaker. Uh, she's one of the well, most well-respected mediums in the United Kingdom and abroad. She's known for her accuracy and specificity in her mental mediumship demonstrations and one-to-one -one readings. Detailed, heart-centered evidence of survival. She is highly valued for her personal integrity and humility. She's an exceptional trance medium and cherished for her nurturing way with her students, freeing them from their own blocks and self-imposed limitations. And I know that some of her students are here this morning. Could you just raise your hand so we can see how many students? Wow. So thank you for all of you. Having served the spirit world for 30 plus years, she is a wellspring of wisdom and experience. She is a course organizer at the Arthur Findlay Spiritualist College and the trustee and principal of Kingswell House Aberdeen. Speaking on Living Victoriously, please welcome Eileen Davies. <laughs> sit working. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. good morning. What a joy to be here, and what a joy this very special day is, because this day will be like no other day that we have ever lived in our life. And so it is necessary that we live a life from our authentic selves. The great power of the universe that we call God or the Spirit doesn't expect us to be perfect. That great infinite power of all life doesn't expect us to win and succeed every time other than that we just simply learn to live an authentic life, a life where we have the capacity to become the embodiment of true love. What does it mean when we speak about love? It means to live from our deepest self, where we look beyond the judgments and the labels that so very often our society will stick yes. upon someone, that they're not good enough, they're not worthy enough, but this great infinite power knows and loves us for just who we are. I always remember many years ago reading a story about Mother Teresa when she was asked to do uh, tour in some of the major cities in this um, lovely land that you live in America and the person that had organized the tours uh, said to her when he showed her this very luxurious room she said I don't need any of these things he said well Mother Teresa what can I do for you there must be something that I can do for you and she replied go out into the streets of this city at 2 or 3 a.m. and let somebody know they love them and let somebody know they, someone cares. She, see, she said, I don't live in the world of the body. I don't live in the world of the ego. I live in the world of the spirit. And in the world of the spirit, all are equal and all are one. And that's a very, very powerful statement. Because when we can truly live from our deepest center, the spirit, everybody everywhere is equal. Everybody everywhere is one and divine. And we live a life then that is victorious. We've overcome the egoic self, the need to feel more special, more important, better to have more, and we've learned to dwell in the stillness of our own inner being. As John Greenleaf, Greenleaf Wheatier said, drop thy still dews of quietness till all thy striving cease. Take from our soul the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess 
the beauty of thy peace. It comes from a poem that he wrote called Soma, where he had witness the Hindu priest taking a herbal concoction to reach a higher state of consciousness and awareness that they may know and experience God. But he, being a Quaker, realized you don't have to do any of these things. You just need to sit in the stillness of your own inner being. And as you do so, you touch an awareness of the divine. A, a place within you opens up where you perceive life as one. The Sufi, Rumi, who founded the Mevlevi Order of the Whirling Dervishes, once said, surely there is a window from my heart to yours. And I try every time I meet someone to meet each person I encounter and embrace from that <coughs> openness of heart, from that openness of spirit where we know love, that no matter what spiritual tradition, whatever our calling has been, whatever our culture, wherever we've come from, it doesn't matter. It's all a label. Rumi would whirl in the alt um, until he achieved an altered state and scribes would write down everything that he uttered when he voiced truth which has lost through the passage and hands of time. Once he was asked who was he and he said, if you try to label and confine me with your labels, you will starve yourself of yourself. For I do not know who I am. I am a stand in loosing confusion. I am your own voice echoing off the walls of God. The walls of God that are boundless and infinite. Look how he speaks about the walls of God and in the next breath tears away the walls of God because it's boundless and infinite. Life is eternal. But life is this very moment we are living right here and right now. <clears throat> Don't think tomorrow I'm going to be a better person. Someday I'm going to arrive. There is no arrival. As it says in the Tao, it's the joy of the journey. And this moment in truth is all we will ever, ever have. But there have been so many spiritual leaders from every single tradition that have been alike, being a great example to that which they believed. They have lived a life that has been motivated and inspired by the Spirit. But they have been no different from you or I. They had their own share of life's difficulties and sorrows to overcome. And yet they lived their life victoriously, knowing that as they align themselves with the silent voice of their own spirit, they, in their own way, were led to live a life that would be a great example. They were extraordinary because they put that extra effort in. And they became extraordinary human beings. And it doesn't matter where you live your life. It matters how you live your life. For every single moment is an opportunity to serve. Every single moment is an opportunity to make a difference in this world to be the channel of peace, to soothe or bring the calming peace to troubled minds sometimes when those who have lost a vision and an awareness of who they really are. Because many people get caught up, don't they, in life, in all the trappings of existence, all the things they feel they must have. And when you realise to live an authentic life is a life when you don't have to fill it with things. Mm -hmm. Just fill it with living a life gracefully, with true awareness, with consideration for the needs of those we, keep up, mm -hmm. we share our life with and keep company with. Spiritualism for me, yes, has been my calling. Because I knew as I grew up that life is eternal, that the body is just a shell. And so I began, to, began from a very young age to inquire and search for a deeper meaning to life. 
because I realise that the body is just a vehicle of the spirit. And one day, when that great infinite power calls us home, we will look at our life and realise, as it's viewed before our awareness, how have we touched the lives of others? Did we live a life of truth, of value, and place emphasis on all the important things, the little things? John O'Donoghue, a beautiful Irish writer, who has written some very moving, powerful um, books, um, who sadly is in the spirit world uh, himself now, but was a great um, author and inspirational, motivational speaker, once said that memory is where our vanished days secretly gather. <laughs> how beautiful, how beautiful. What will you take with you when you leave this earth behind? You won't be able to take anything on a material level, not even, not even the books that you've read, <laughs> and yet you will take it within your own soul, won't you? But you will take the memory of all those little moments who, which drop by drop have made the cup of your life overflow. The question possibly we will ask ourselves is will the cup of your life overflow with the milk of human kindness? Will it? Will you be able to hold your head up high and look at your reflection of your life, of who you really are, and know that, come what may, you did your best. Come what may, even though sometimes the road was bumpy and uneven, that you gave it your best shot. Because as I said at the beginning, that infinite power of all life isn't expecting us to be perfect. If we were perfect, we wouldn't be here, would we? <laughs> But that infinite power is calling us to know who we really are, to the waken up to the realisation that we are divine and eternal beings, that we are not the sum totality of this physical body that we're now in. It's just a piece of clothes that we wear that serves us however well, how, according to how well we've treated it and looked after it in our life. But let's look at in the future, and the future begins in this very moment, of striving to create in our small corner of the world, unity in diversity. Let's look beyond, as Rumi said, so that we can touch each other from a place of the heart, that you truly have an open window in your soul, that you can truly reach out to others in their time of need and be the listening ear. Be the person that doesn't walk quickly by but allows, allows the grace of the divine to be a source of compassion when someone around you has a need. You know, there have been so many wonderful speakers I read, um, or saw, should I say, not read, on YouTube. Times have changed, haven't they? <laughs> One day we're reading, the next everything's on uh, um, YouTube and uh, the computers and iPhones. And about a small boy in Indonesia who was six years old. He lived in the back of a shop in one room and his mother... Uh, work very hard to um, keep his uh, rest of his family and they had very little income and he was so inspired to live a good life to better the lives of those he called his loved ones and family his mom and his brothers and sisters that no they couldn't afford any electricity at night so he took his homework and a box and sat in the light of McDonald's takeaway in the streets of the city he lived in, in the Philippines. And when a tourist stopped and asked him what he was doing, he said, I want to make my family happy. 
I want to be someone who makes a difference in the lives of others. I want to be a policeman when I grow up. Mm. And so I'm studying. He was six years old. In a borrowed light from a takeaway. And yet he had this spark of desire to want to make a difference, not only for those around him, but help the street children and keep justice and law and order on the streets of the city he lived in. You see, inspiration doesn't have to come from a speaker on a platform. Inspiration is drawn from the lives of ordinary people. Martin Luther King once said, if it is your lot to be someone who sweeps streets, then sweep streets so well. Sweep streets as well as Michelangelo painted pictures, or Beethoven composed and played music, or Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will stop and stand still and say, here is someone who is doing their job well. What powerful words. And he went on to say, if you can't be a sun, be a star. If you can't be a mountain, then be a hill. If you can't be a freeway, then be a mountain track. Because it isn't by size or money that we are measured in life, but in the goodness of our heart and in the content of our character. Very, very powerful words. And he forged to create a difference, an equality. Of course we're equal. When you look through the eyes of the spirit, that's all you can ever see is equality. People may look different, speak differently. You can travel right across the earth, but everybody's needs will be fundamentally the same. We all need to feel love and to be loved, to love in return. We all need to feel our life matters, our life counts, that we have a place we can call home, that our life has meaning and purpose. You can go to any culture, any place, and everybody will say exactly the same. How much can you make a difference? How much can you truly live a victorious life and overcome the small-mindedness and the doubts and the fears? Because if you look at every single spiritual tradition, their core essence is one of love, is one of meeting each other from that divine place of unconditional love. We won't like everybody. That's too great a task, isn't it? It's true. It's impossible. We live in a diverse world and people think differently and act differently and sometimes people will rub us up the wrong way. But that doesn't mean that we can look them in the eye and see the same light of God reflected back to us. And it doesn't matter whatever you've done in your past, the past is the past. You know, there is a wonderful, wonderful saying that um, every a saint had a past and every sinner has a future. No. <laughs> I don't like the word sinner be truthful, but it's a, it's a lovely little saying, isn't it? You know, because every person who is living a victorious life, who is living a life that in every sense of the word is filled with integrity, messed up sometimes, made mistakes, said the wrong things. But as I said a moment ago, this day, this moment, will never ever come round again. Do we wake up with gratitude in our hearts and souls for this very special moment that we have been gifted? Do we look for the beauty in all life? Because each life is a reflection of the divine. Even as you gaze upon the beauty of a flower, it's reminding us of our own innate beauty. That flower doesn't have to struggle to say, am I good enough? Am I beautiful enough? Is my fragrance divine? 
It just does what it knows best and what it knows how to be. The rose doesn't question, should I be in a lily? <laughs> it doesn't. It just is. So I'm asking you just to be you. Is that so difficult? No. no. But to be the best you you can be. The authentic you. Not the you that is bound by other people's expectations and other people's labels, but to be you in your own unique, beautiful way. In the whole of creation, there has never been anyone quite like you. Do we celebrate each day the gift of life? When we look in the mirror, do we say thank you, God? for the abundance and joy of life and living that I have been blessed with. Because we can't think of two thoughts at the same time. And if we're coming from a place of love, then we can't be fearful. Because every single action we, we perform or thought we think is either coming from a place of love or fear. But the wonderful thing is that every day you have a choice whether to live a life of beauty and love or let the doubts and fears in. The Sufis have a wonderful saying that before you say or do anything at all, it should pass through three gates. Is it kind? Is it necessary? And is it true? And if it can pass through all three gates, then say it. What a challenge. Could we live for one day with that thought in mind? Is what I'm about to say, is it kind? Is it necessary? Is it true? Because if we can, and we have lived that entire day from the spirit of love, and the challenge is when you get up the next day to live that day in the spirit of love. So it's about being mindful it's about cultivating the light of awareness, that the power of awareness will shine and radiate through everything we think and do. Awareness is about being aware of the needs of those around us. It's not about me, 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 me first. It's such a powerful place when we can look at each person and recognize they too have a right to be here. They too have their part to play in the grand scheme of life. <clears throat> and it doesn't matter how you are called to serve, it matters that you serve. Mm -hmm. Brother Lawrence from the Benedictine tradition once said, who wanted to spend his life in prayer, but he was his task was to uh, cook for the other brother monks. And he wasn't very pleased about it until one day he realized that this day I turn my omelet in the pan, I turn it for God and it will taste like no other omelet because I have done it from love and I think that is such a powerful thing because sometimes we expect service to be standing on a platform and suggesting to others how they should live their life but when we, trans when we do something with the spirit of love, we transform it from the level of the mundane to the divine. And just like Brother Lawrence, the food was served with great love. So it doesn't matter where you've been called to serve. It doesn't matter what your allotted task is, as Martin Luther King said. It just means that you perform whatever you do with gratitude and love in your heart then you will have lived a virtuous life, a victorious life. The poet Christina Rossetti once said, tread softly, for all the earth is holy ground. Could be, if I looked with seeing eyes, the spot at which I stand is really paradise. Here, where we are, is paradise. In the shining faces of one another, in this room or outside or when we get home, if we are connected with this eternal power of all life, 
Because paradise isn't a place we're going to arrive to. It's a state of consciousness. And that state of consciousness is when you truly live the awakened life. When you live a good life. And that's the challenge that we each face every single day. But it happens gracefully and silently in the stillness of our own being when we listen to the still, small voice of God. Thank you. I speak this word in the first person for absolutely everyone who hears the sound of my voice here in person or those that are watching on the live stream. What I know is that that authentic life is the life I'm living. I choose it right now, today. I let the past be the past. And I bring my whole attention to who I know myself to be. And I see the glory of God everywhere. In nature, in the people in my life, as the people who were in service in my community. I see it everywhere. I see it in that six-year-old. And I see it in his family. I see it everywhere in everything. From this moment on, I simply choose. I choose to let that light shine within me. Not out of ego or need to show off, but out of a real desire to be that authentic self and to be in service to a greater idea, to the wholeness that is the presence. But I know that <laughs> the, what occurs is that my entire life is blessed and is a blessing that all of my connections, all of my relationships are love relationships, especially those that I didn't know were love relationships. The ones that I was resisting, I now bring my full consciousness, my full awareness to those beloveds and to myself. I speak this word that I am enough in absolutely every way, that there's nothing that needs to be fixed or changed or straightened out. I'm perfect just the way I am. In my imperfections, in my humanness, I am more than enough. I am the ambassador for the divine. And I know that this is a blessing in every sense. It's a blessing physically, it's a blessing mentally and emotionally relationally and financially. So much good occurs. And I'm very, very grateful. And so with my heart, just overflowing with gratitude, I know that this word is complete. It is a word of good, a word of God. And please help me to anchor it by saying with me. And, and so, so it is. is. back to the platform, the wonderful Gino Walker. Can't find the fighters. The 
This is time for us to share our gifts, our tithes, our offerings. We have a prosperity affirmation, we'll say, and then a few seconds of silence just to feel that gratefulness, that gratitude, and appreciation. And then, um, and then we'll um, sing together, Blessed Always. I am so blessed. <laughs> the other name for Blessed Always, I am so blessed. <laughs> and, uh, and then Diane will do something else that will also inspire us. So, please join me. My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply.
theme, which has been beautiful, uh, and uh, just to continue that theme, I'd like to acknowledge the people who are in service this morning, and uh, or have been this whole week, and if you please stand so we can give you a la la. <laughs> remain standing. Practitioners are trained in the art and science of affirmative prayer. And if you want to transform your life, make an appointment to see one of these beautiful people. You'll be so happy you did. And uh, to get a taste of that, right after service, you can stop by one of the affirmative prayer tables or the tranquility room, and they'll be happy to give you a little taste. The people who are in service this morning are Kathy Story, uh, Reverend Carlos Gerardus and Patrick Freeman. Let's acknowledge our <laughs> Then we've got a huge group of people that are here for the very first time and thank you so much. Thank you for inviting your friends and having them come. If that's you, we'd like to acknowledge you. We have a little gift for you and all you need to do is indicate it's you by standing up or raising your hand or something. Standing up is better because I'm going to affirm you. There you go. There you go. And then um, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to um, affirm, and the congregation is going to repeat after me so you can feel all of their energy. Welcome to our center. Welcome to our center. You're a magnificent spiritual being. You're a magnificent spiritual being. We see who you are. You are whole, complete, and perfect. You are whole, complete, and perfect. Welcome home. Welcome home. And you may be seated. In that little green bag, you find some information about our center and a gift. And if you go to the um, bookstore afterwards, fill it the, the, there's a form in there, fill it in, you'll receive another gift. We're so grateful that you came today. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Do we have no? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have announcements, I see. <laughs> well, hello and welcome. I see by your green bag uh, that you're new here at the center. Yes, my family unit and I have recently arrived from France. Well, welcome. Uh, my name is Kimberly. I am called Beldar. You know, if you enjoyed the service today, we have a get together. Uh, afterwards called Conscious Connections, where we're going to put our heads together with Mary Brogdon about today's topic. <laughs> Mebs, Mebs, touching of cone should be reserved for the sleeping chamber. No, no, no. We just talk about the service. I find this acceptable. Tomorrow night, our speaker from today, Eileen Davies, will be back presenting a demonstration of mediumship. 
At last, the mothership comes to collect us. <laughs> no, no, this is a demonstration of mediumistic powers and our interconnectedness. It's from seven to nine and presented on a love offering basis. A sign-up sheet is available on the kiosk. It's actually here in these two people's hands. Okay. <laughs> kiosk, a small structure in a public area used for providing information or displaying advertisements when incorporating an interactive display screen or screens. And we have a Wednesday's Wisdom service every Wednesday. Uh, this, this week, Joanne Leone, a practitioner, will speak on the topic, Who do you think you are? I am still called Beldar. <laughs> She's speaking for the first time since her return to our center. Ah, which star systems was she visiting? Star travel these days is extremely expensive. Well, she's enrolled in Prosperity Plus 3, so, you know, that's not an issue for her. But unfortunately, <laughs> enrollment is close to new students now, but maybe you could take that class next year. Is each session at this location hosted by a different humanoid? No, no, it just seems like that sometimes. But next Sunday, <laughs> our guest speaker will be the dynamic Dr. Sue Rubin, who was Yay! Dr. Heather's teacher. I do not know who was Dr. Heather's teacher. I thought I saw you with uh, another person from France. Yes, that is my matrimonial unit, Primat. Oh, well, we have a women's circle here at 7 o'clock next Friday, May 3rd. She might be interested in attending. I will communicate this data to her when she returns with our seedling. Oh. <laughs> well, if you have children, you might be interested in this. On Monday, May 6th at 7 o'clock, there will be an organizational meeting for the Parent Forum. All parents are invited to participate. If everyone jumped into a bituminous cauldron, would you? All right. Well, speaking of jumping in with both feet, you should make plans to attend Memorial Day weekend at the beautiful UCLA Conference Center in Lake Arrowhead with like-minded CSL folks right here from Southern California. Speakers are Dr. Heather, Dr. Maura Fox from Redondo Beach, uh, Reverend Mike McMorrow from Granada Hills, and the keynote speaker is a Buddhist monk, the venerable Kusala Bhikshu. Flyers are available in the bookstore, oh, and everyone loves the food up there. Excellent. We will consume mass quantities of fiberglass <laughs> and beer. Well, okay. I hope to see you and your family around then. I find you acceptable. When my people come to colonize this planet, you will be on the protected rolls and no harm will come to you. Thank you. Uh, let's welcome the children. Let us. <laughs>